The Enduring Spirit is album number four from Two Mold, a Ontario, Canada based uh, death metal band who've evolved uh, at, at hyper speed over the course of their first three albums. They definitely were more of a Finnish death metal influenced, uh, sort of almost doomed uh, feeling band on their first demo, and they uh, evolved quickly to their, their own sort of groove oriented style with a lot of uh, kind of warp speed riffs that worked in their place in there, and they, they'd, they'd been good at. Uh, working with pace and movement and um, sort of exciting runs of phrases in terms of their riff craft over the course of their first record developing. And um, this fourth album, uh, it's still very much related to what they've been working on or they had been working on from uh, 2015 until 2019. But we see the band having taken uh, a break and changing quite a bit over the pandemic years and uh, basically the way that i see this album is they've all taken time to develop their own skills and uh, brought as much development as they had made over their those first three albums into this fourth album so we're yes it's the fourth album from the band and it is in the progressive death metal style and in many ways it's their sixth album you know, it's it's very mature in that sense, and we get uh, the uptick in technique and proficiency and interplay that they really uh, enjoyed putting this record together, and they really packed it with just ideas. So, in a lot of ways, fans of old school progressive and technical death metal will instantly appreciate the flair and the style involved in this. Uh, I would say lead guitar heavy and uh, generally just progressive death metal album which uh, has a lot of those tenets where you have the fretless bass bounding around and you have um, different types of songwriting that uh, provides different experiences from song to song so this is still a death metal band and uh, you'll if you're familiar with the uh, most recent demo tape uh, aperture of body you'll understand that they were working in more of those ideas uh, which are much more fully fleshed out there. These are different songs, not new versions of those songs. So these are um, unique entities in the sense that they were developed uh, quite a bit beyond March uh, 2022 when that demo was, was recorded or May, wh whichever month it was. So uh, if you were expecting uh, a, like a, an immediate follow up to Planetary Clairvoyance, which was this um, sort of heavier, dank and uh, atmospheric record that was full of brutality it was kind of their heaviest record yet it was maybe their fastest record yet uh, and this is again full-on more progressive death metal it is all about um, a different mood a different idea and a different band in a lot of different ways so it still sounds like them and the grooves are still there but uh, let's cut into a song before I rant too long and just get a sense of uh, just how different this record is in terms of just showing off what they can do So I would accuse them of, of overthinking this album or, uh, you know, premeditating it quite a bit if I didn't know better, because I really feel like they, uh, they've, the band had spent a lot of time on other projects during the pandemic years and put out uh, several albums during that time in other projects such as Dream Unending and Topiary. And I don't know if uh, any of the noise projects or anything related came out because I, I don't follow those personally. So, uh, they, I believe they worked on this album around the time they were finishing uh, the first Dream and Ending album. And uh, that, I think, yeah, so that would line up in that they had written most of these songs by then and they had started demoing and putting them together by 2022. So uh, this was uh, kind of finishing that thought really quickly, moving on to the next one and just hammering out this album that turns out to be brilliant. So uh, there's a certain finesse and readiness for this uh, two mold thing to happen. And uh, they, they attacked it for sure. But from all reports, they had a good time doing it and had a good time, you know, getting back together after a year or two off. So uh, it shows, it shows that there's uh, not only uh, an abundance of ideas, but that there's enough movement between them that they have 
uh, a chance to be profound. Even the death doom of dream unending had times where it was just so ready to move on to the next idea that we never got the profundity of it. And on this album, yeah, they're, they're ready to go. They're blazing through these songs, but uh, they're letting them hit in certain ways and certain points where it matters. And, you know, there might be two brutal songs that kick off the record that are full of just technical ideas hammered out front to back with tons of solos, but, well, two to four solos each song, but they're, you know, they're three to five minute songs. And uh, then they'll hit with this big progressive song that works its way into a um, about a seven minute song, a couple of those in the middle. It's very well paced and... Uh, you get the sense that they did think about the arrangement quite a bit, but it came together quickly as they arranged it, and it still feels, uh, it doesn't feel overworked. It doesn't feel stiff. It doesn't feel, uh, they had time to insert feeling into these songs and movements, and I think where this is most evident is in uh, Derek Fella's uh, bass performance. I think, you know, obviously the lead guitars stand out, and that as expected at this point, but... Uh, the bass performances are surprisingly uh, virtuosic in their movement. They have a lot of uh, coloration to them, and they add a lot to the songs, which was kind of unexpected. I didn't, you know, I didn't hear a lot of uh, that standing out on the Outer Heaven record, but on this record, they they actually they do really emphasize the feeling of this record in the way that you know, like Unquestionable Presence would be different without those bass lines, and I think that's true of this record as well. Um, so. Uh, you know, without rambling on too far, you know, I wrote this enormous review. You can read through that all yourself. Um, this is a, a fantastic record, and it does seem to be one that um, means a lot to them in terms of uh, what the lyrics explore, in terms of both metaphysical and sort of uh, their darker angle on that. And uh, there uh, is an expression of, of like joyous happiness. Uh, contentment you know there's there's a there's certainly an emotional connection to this music that wasn't uh, they the veneer has kind of uh, been picked away after the very uh, cinematic narrative of uh, planetary clairvoyance which is more just telling a story that was personal uh, whereas this record feels like it's um, getting into uh, more um, metaphysical importance is it their focus? You know, it, it kind of is. Uh, a, there's a bit of cynic all over this record, but there's a lot more to it. And uh, it's something you're, you're probably just going to want to enjoy on yourself. I think a lot of people are excited for this record. Um, I certainly was, but uh, I received it, you know, at a point where I had uh, the luxury of listening to it for months before it came out. And, uh, th you know, that's obviously I'm very grateful for that chance because it gave me a time to obsess over it for the entire three months that it was in my lap, sitting there where I couldn't talk about it. So uh, that's why the rec the review is so exceptionally verbose. That's why the score is so high, is because uh, this is what probably the best death metal record of the year that I've encountered yet. Um, and I'm caught up through at least October. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, f I feel like it, I'll have to justify that with all of these... Um, these sort of uh, scoring points hitting. And I, I the, the last thing that I wasn't sure about was what the album art would be because I didn't have a copy of it until recently. Of course, yes, this is uh, another fine work from Jesse Jacoby who did the album art from um, Planetary Clairvoyance and some of the artwork for Norco, uh, Point and Click Adventure Game, if you want to check that out. So, uh, yes, that all works out. I've got the lyrics. I, you know, I know when all the solos hit. I've, I've thoroughly obsessed over this record, and uh, more than any other record this year, other than, you know, one or two, I think there's a, like a black metal record or two that I would also consider uh, up there in this, this quality. So, uh, yeah, I would just jump into it, give it a full listen, don't interrupt any of it, and uh, it's, it's just one of the better death metal records of the year, and of course, it gets the highest recommendation again. So, uh, you know, read the review, check it out if you want to know more of my thoughts in much more detail, and uh, go ahead and uh, listen to the album. It's out this Friday digitally and out on uh, physical copies in the middle of October. 